effects with your currency, then you can change from specific use or platform use to general use. Yeah, and, and, you see that and, happening with BNB for sure. Exactly. Um, and what you also see with BNB, as I said, is like it is related to the fundamentals. It's a transaction business. It's using transaction currency, fixing supply because users are not price sensitive to fluctuations of the currency in their activities on the platform. And you cannot take that context and apply it to shoes. Because if I have my shoes currency and my price drops by a quarter, in Binance, that means my trade, instead of costing me you know, a dollar, might cost me $2. Right. right. I'm okay. I'm okay, because I still made or lost money on my trade. The trade itself was the primary emotional concern, not the fees. With the shoes, when my shoes currency goes by a quarter, I need to go back to the market and now pay, I pay four times for my shoes, what I would have paid when I first purchased that coin. Right. Economies work that work in that way with a product or service that we can relate to a non-crypto or real world value. Uh, and, and a perfect example of those is the, the investment world where people are talking about just distributed investment vehicles, blockchain based investment platforms. Right. I want to put a quarter of a million dollars into a privately held company. So I purchase your coin, your coin halves in the time between purchasing the coin and wanting to invest in the company, my goodness, now I've got it. Now I'm only putting $125,000 into the investment. That business is going to last a total of two seconds. Yeah. And, and so this is this tension where the outside those transaction fee businesses, high volume transaction, when you get low volume, high value businesses, you need a different pattern of design. For sure. Yeah. You can't accept volatility. So what I like to ask here in this question is like, well, what is the value you're creating as a business and how is that reflected accurately in the currency so we can set up the right design pattern so that you don't unwillingly create a design that causes your users to evacuate from day one. Right. Yeah, that's really interesting. Wow, really cool. Yeah. Okay, so we'll move to the last one, number five, and then we'll we'll come back for a second episode to do this the second half because... There's so much content in here. This is just great. Yeah, so the, the, the final question in this set is, does your business work better if your supply of currency is fixed or preset or if it varies with demand? And so this, again, is a general economic question. And the simplest way to, to describe this to people is, if you have an Uber and what you said with Uber was that we were always going to fix the supply of drivers, then how do we think that the, that the customer is going to respond? Because that is effectively the taxi world before Uber came in. Right. And that is the design pattern that Bitcoin, Ethereum and Binance and other coins, almost everybody, in fact, I think every single, uh, every single to token apart from Polo Fuel when it comes on in the top 100 has a form of, fixed with some kind of instrument to change supply. Right. That, that is absolutely fine for the Binance example that we talked about before or for Bitcoin. But where it doesn't work is productive economies because as I just showed, yeah. a productive economy where you fix supply, like taxis, is being disintermediated by an Uber. And if you need a currency to match a productive economy, what you're trying to do is use supply yeah. to vary to meet demand instead of using price. So can you give any examples of projects where we're, where we see, because I mean, most of the projects I've come across, they fix the supply and if, and they don't mint more coins, but they tend yeah. to burn them over time. So if we're talking about variable supply rather than fixed supply and variable, variable implies minting and burning as necessary, are there projects that are doing both? Uh, a hollow fuel is the only one. Okay. Yeah. Um, so it's basically taking a pattern of mutual credit, which is effectively like um, double entry accounting. Yeah. I would have, and, yeah. And it's it's take, combining that approach with the idea of backing it by an asset. In this case, it's distributed posting, and that asset therefore has a value because it's taking traditional hosting and, and moving it into a distributed form. So you're using the idea of demand, distributed hosting, supply, your network of hosts and price. 
how yeah. much the application is willing to pay for distributed hosting as the mechanism for the economy. But you're saying like, oh, as demand increases, what we want is more hosts. And so therefore we oh, want to I create see. more right, I understand. Right, I get it. And as if the number of hosts were to de decrease, then you'd need less coins to go with it. And as the uh, network effect is growing and expanding, then so it's, it's basically meeting market demand uh, exactly. and matching it so that you don't end up with over and under supply, but actually you have a matching supply by way of the way this, the system bonds. Exactly. And so this, this, there are, there are many approaches. And That's, I'm not what's interesting about that is it's so it's so um, it's somewhat theoretical in nature talking about it, and it's something probably harder to grasp because people don't think that way. So you're starting to think like, how does it know when to expand or to contract? Because that, right, yes. <laughs> very well, very hard to get your head around that one. But this is the beauty of the distributed world that we're talking about because it, when you have edge intelligence and you have ways of listening to edge intelligence, you can design systems that expand or contract based on economic activity. You can never centralize that and know, but you can know in a distributed world. Um, and it works with intangible assets and it will work, like, ideally it's gonna work with physical assets so that you know, Nike was a great example. I mean, eventually we'll get to a model and you'll have some kind of distributed shoe company and as demand changes, we'll be way more sensitive with demand to suppliers. The way oh, interesting. Wow. So this, exactly. So what you are getting yeah. to is a new pattern here of uh, currency design, which is asset-backed distributed currencies where supply is the thing that fluctuates to meet demand. And what you'll get is, and well, the way Holofuel is designed is that we did initial benchmarking and that set a baseline price, right? Because it effectively said the cost of distributed computing is X. Then what we think will happen is the cost of distributed computing will go to Y, which is dramatically less. Because the idea of a network-based distributed business is that you commoditize prices, you make, you make things cheaper, cheaper, more efficient, more available, more local, more scalable. And so the token holders, will have from the early time, will have a price increase. So yeah. you'll get value from being an early participant in the network, but over time, because price isn't the, the matchmaker here, supply will change, demand will change, and price will be fairly constant, which is exactly what we want for these productive economies. For sure. Wow, really cool. I mean, um, I, I'm not even sure how to summarize these five questions into like kind of a, what have we just covered? Because we've talked so much about building economy, about the tokenomic model and that, why are you designing the model in the first place? Is it for the purposes of an investor or for the purposes of your community? Um, what do communities look like? How do you build more effective communities? How do you engage people? I mean, uh, does that summarize more or less what we've talked about? <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, we're, we're building a new world. So yeah. we need to cover, we need to cover everything. What we're looking for is businesses and people that are really well informed and making the best choice for the, the, the business or the economy that they want to build. And yeah. I just want to make sure people have all the information at the fingertips to make those choices um, rather than feeling in the dark and not being able to follow the threads through effectively. And yeah, making just, because the incorrect design can, can and will kill great businesses. And a and lot of, I mean, the, the reality is a lot of projects are built on certain designs that don't work anyway, and they're having to rethink it and redo it. I mean, coin being there is one thing. The mechanisms around how it operates can be changed over time, which is great, unless you've built a very complex blockchain infrastructure, and now you're having to fork your own infrastructure to make it continue working, which I haven't heard of happening really, but I mean, we're, we're in very, very interesting territory with all these new developments. So this was, this was great. Thank you for, you know, for writing that article and inspiring us to get back on here and talk through this stuff. Cause this is stuff that Yuri and I talk about all the time and we're recording at a time when Yuri's still sleeping. So we'll give a little shout out to Yuri. Cause you know, he's probably just about waking up now and thinking, uh, what are these guys up to? And <laughs> so oh, well, maybe, maybe we'll do six to 10 with him so he can jump in and, and oh, let's see. I mean, yeah, you know, we could do that for sure. That'd be interesting too. So um, anyway, thank you very much, David Atkinson from hollow chain. Uh, we will certainly put the links down below for the article you wrote on your, your 10 points so people can check out the article and we will come back and cover six through 10 and dig in deeper. Um, 
But thanks everybody for, for listening in from all of our podcast channels and for watching us here on YouTube. Uh, give us a subscribe because David Atkinson is a super cool guy and we want to hear more from him. To the moon, until next time. Thank you for joining us today on The Coin Chat. Join us on Telegram on t.me forward slash The Coin Chat where we discuss a range of topics on cryptocurrency. And visit us on patreon.com forward slash The Coin Chat for show notes, outtakes, and previews of additional content. Or follow us on our website, which is www.thecoinchat.net. And remember to like and subscribe to us on your way out. To the moon, until next time.